Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jay from TNJ. And make sure you hit that like button. We're back for more White Tails Dynasty. And this is your favorite episode where you guys get to be creative. This is the episode to submit your recruit. Now let's talk about what I'm looking for this year. Remember, I am now re recruiting in the Southeast. So you can now submit recruits in the Midwest and Southeast. We have now unlocked the Southeast region. And what I'm looking for this year, I'm looking for offensive linemen, tight ends, no receivers. I'm not looking for receivers or quarterbacks. Don't submit a quarterback or receivers or running back as well. I'm not looking for running backs this year, but I am looking for defensive players, linebackers, defensive line for sure. And also, uh, I'm looking for some secondary guys. I mean, pretty much everybody on the defense is up for grabs. I would say there's a couple of positions where I'm pretty much stacked at, like defensive tackle, nose tackle. I think I'm pretty much set there. But the other linebacker positions, I mean, we have guys that are graduating soon, and we have some aging veterans at safety as well. So you do want to submit your guys there. Now, let's hop into this episode. We are going up against... A top 25 school in Minnesota. We have three games left on the season. Minnesota, Northern Illinois, and Cincinnati. Northern Illinois will end the season. Now, we're going up against a tough Minnesota team. And Minnesota is one of the teams that got promoted last season from the American Athletic. Remember how I have the promotion and relegation system? And they have got demoted once before and now have worked their way back. So they're pretty, they're doing pretty good this year. And top 25, I'd say that's progression. And just looking at their team, they're pretty well-rounded. They have a good mix of seniors and juniors, a ton of seniors on defense, though, so they'll need to recruit better there. But just looking at our schedule, I think we did pretty good this year with what we had at quarterback especially. But so many games have been so close. And Deshaun Wilson is back in two weeks. So we will need to take care of business before he gets back. And here we go, at home at least, for this tough game. And here is John Tay Batson to take this opening kickoff. And he takes it for a 40-yard gain. And out comes Marquise Moore. Marquise Moore has struggled the last few games. Throwing the ball with him has been nothing but tough. Here he is starting out the game with a read option. And he has a lot of room, and he finally gets pushed out of bounds at about the 21 yard line. That's a huge gain of 40 plus yards. And it's a first down. Probably should have broke that one for a touchdown. Instead, we're set up here at the 25 yard line. Throw across the middle and it's almost picked off. Joe James almost had that one. And it really has been a struggle throwing the ball Marquise Moore. I cannot wait for Wilson to get healthy, but here's a handoff. Apollo St. Vincent, who's on his way to being the first 1000 yard rusher in Wisconsin State history as we get into a first and goal handoff. This is Highlights Jackson who fights forward for a touchdown, nine yards out. And there we go, we strike first. I don't remember the last time we've actually had an opening drive touchdown. We only took a minute to score on that one and it's a seven point game. So here is David Hughes starting out the game with the draw play and there's a nice tackle in the backfield. Tamari Jamison is having a heck of a year as a first-year starter. So second and 14, this time Kaysen in the pocket. He's going to throw, and it's picked that. off. And look who it is. It's Tamari Jamison back-to-back -back plays. And this one goes for a touchdown. 14-0. What a way to start this game out. And wow, we were just reading the quarterback's eyes. And look at Tamari Jamison. He goes with the slant route, comes back, and makes the amazing play on that one. And it's 14-0 here. What a start to this game. So now first and 10 here, handoff. No, he's gonna keep it. And Kingston gets tackled in the backfield. That is the veteran Justin Royal. He's one of those juniors on defense who I'm gonna be looking to replace soon. Like, like I said, you wanna submit those defensive backs as well because you know we have two seniors on the outside at cornerback, but we also have Yarbrough who's a slot corner and he's a nickelback nickel corner and I think we're going to be replacing him soon as he is kind of a still a sophomore on this offense but on this defense but he's not doing particularly well we'll have to see what his future holds so here we get the ball back after almost another pick by Tamari Jamison but the Minnesota defense starts to show up as they get a tackle in the backfield as we get it to a third and 13 we throw it to the left side Jasper Sweet and man that is just the quarterback play We've had to deal with, that's incomplete, not even close. 
As now here comes Minnesota back on offense. Throw to the right side on the next drive, and that's going to be caught by Scott Sewell on the sideline. That's a first down gain of 12. So they eventually get it to about the 27-yard line. Running the screen pass, but this time Adam Williams gets the tackle, and there we go. Nice play in the backfield. Third and 19 now. They're going to run the screen pass out to left side. David Hughes picks up a block, throws off a tackler, and does go down at about the 32-yard line. And now they end up settling for the long field goal, making it a 14-3 game. So here is Marquise Moore back at a quarterback, but look at these throws. That's an incomplete pass. I mean, he cannot make any throws from the pocket. Third and 10 now. Rolling out to the right. We're going to try to run it this time, but stay in the pocket. And we throw, and it's going to be picked off. Maybe a bad choice on that one. And it does backfire. And Marquise Moore throws his first interception of the game. I mean, what can you expect? I mean, every time I throw passes, I mean, it's going to be either incomplete or the throw is going to be way off, maybe intercepted. We have to take chances, and maybe run the ball is really the solution with these guys. So here's a throw across the middle. This time, Minnesota on a second and 14. That's caught by the tight end, Dan Franklin. And now, third and five. Can we come up with a stop to start the second quarter? Throw to the flats. O'Donnell gets pushed out of bounds for about a gain of one. So now fourth and four. They are just out of field goal range here at about the 31-yard line. The kick is going to be up, and it is going to be just short. And we do retain this lead 14-3. to three. And now here we go back on offense. Like I said, we're going to start to run the ball now. Jasper Sweet on the jet sweep. He gets hit hard, and that's only a gain of one. But now we get into a third and nine. These are situations where you have to pass. Rolling out to the right side. Marquise Moore throws wide open was Bradbury. He had a few steps. I mean, if that throw is even close, that's a touchdown. And now we have to punt this ball away back to Minnesota. Marquise start Moore starts out this game one for nine. So here's David Hughes on a long run, breaking a tackle, and he's going to break free, and he's going to be tripped up from behind. Coco Bamaye on the stop. That's a big gain of 61 yards. So first and 10 this time. Kaysen, he's going to scramble out to the right, get around Charles Davis, breaks a tackle from Aurelio Villain, and gets tackled from behind by Tamari Jamison to about the 15-yard line for a first down. Kaysen on the, play, on the read option this time. He's taking it to the right side. And he's getting inside the five, and now Minnesota looks good on this drive. So inside the five-yard line, they're going to run an option to the right side, pitching it to David Hughes. Nobody's home. It's a touchdown. Two yards out, and Minnesota is right back in this game. So now on the next kickoff, here's Jonte Batson back to receive this kick. Has some blocks on the right side, gets around the edge, and he gets another pancake block that time, and he's going to walk in. That's a touchdown. And wow, 88 yards. The blocking on that play was amazing. And that was really good a blocking downfield by Denzel Jr. And man, this is going to be an amazing game. I know it because we're finally putting up points on offense. And look at this. Anderson Reed gets in the backfield. One of those veteran defensive linemen I was just talking about. David Hughes is on the opposite end of that one. And that's a loss of four yards. And now second and 15. Here is Kaysen this time yeah, trying to scramble out. You're not getting around Frankie Kai. That's another sack for the veteran. Now sophomore and now third and 19. We've been getting them into a lot of third and longs. Here's another pass out to the right side. Hughes can't get around a really old villain. And he even uses the stiff arm to get the animation about a seven or eight extra yards. But we do force the punt. And here we are back on an offense. We're going to continue to run this ball. Here's Bradbury. He runs the ball really, really tough with when he gets it. Gain of 15 yards. He stays on his feet, and that's a first down. So now winding down this first half here, 30 seconds left. Here's Apollo St. Vincent cutting it to the outside and using his stiff arm, and he does get about a gain of eight, but the clock does continue to run. So we call our first time out. Here's a handoff. Julian Gonzalez now in the game. He gets up the middle 10 yards and a first down for him. And now we're inside the 10 yard line. And here we go once again, first and goal. Here's a quarterback draw up the middle. Marquise Moore fighting his way in. That's a touchdown, seven yards out. And that's the strength of his game. I mean, he's not an accurate thrower of the football, but he can run the ball really, really well. It's 28 to 10 going into half. 
So here we go to start the second half. Kaysen, we've shut him down at quarterback, and here they are starting out the half running the ball, but David Hughes is tackled, and that's Adam Williams for a gain of one that time. And we eventually get it to a third and nine. Here's Kaysen, throw across the middle. He's got Pitts, who's wide open, and it's a first down gain of 22. And now they get it close to about the 50-yard line. Seven minutes left here in the third quarter. Handoff, Hughes to the left side. And there is a nice stop in the backfield. Maverick Yarbrough, who I talked about, he hasn't made many plays as far as pass defense goes, but he's been making some pretty good one-on-one -on -one tackles. So here's a screen pass out to left right side on a third down, and that is another stop. And it's Adam Williams again, and we force the punt. And now we get the ball back here with a 28 to 10 lead after that punt. Here is Apollo up the middle, a gain of 10. He's used to those type of runs in this, this season. I mean, he's been really breaking off some pretty good runs. He's running tough. So here he is once again, another first down on a carry. And we give it to him again. Once again, another first down up the middle. Our offensive line is dominating the defensive front right now as we eventually move this ball inside the 10. Here's a counter play, but this time Apollo gets smacked on that one. And that eventually brings it to a third and goal. We're going to give it to Bradbury. He cuts up field, runs into an offensive player, and only picks up a gain of three. So we have a decision to make. Yeah, we're going to go for it. On the two, why not? Fourth and goal, but it's stuffed. Minnesota with the big time hit and the big time stop. But they're still down by 18 points to start the fourth quarter. So here is Kaysen back on an offense. He's going to throw to the left side. He's got Daniel Matthews and gets out of bounds for a gain of 14. So now close to about the 30-yard line. This time running the hurry-up offense as they are down by three scores. Kaysen does get swallowed up, and that's Colson Kavoris, the senior. Another one of those veteran guys on defense. And now they get it to a third and 13. Here is Kaysen this time trying to get rid of it, but he's sacked again. It's Frankie Kai, another big time play. And now fourth and 20. This one could be the game. Here's a throw across the middle. So well is tripped up. And that's gonna be a turnover here with five minutes left here in the fourth. And here we go back on an offense, just trying to seal this game up. Here's Marquise Moore running the read option. Pitches it away to Michael Bradbury, who gets another spin move. And there he is. He's off to the races, gain of 47 yards. Wow, this offense is really good when we run the ball well. And you can see the option is definitely a big part of this game as really giving the ball to these receivers has been huge for us this season. So here's another jet sweep this time. But Jasper Sweet cannot get away from the defense. It's 31 to 10 here. And now we move this under a minute or two minutes left here in the game. Here's a deep shot. One on one. Marquise Moore does make the play in coverage. He has had a good year. He has had a history of getting burnt, but he's made more plays than not. And here's a throw out to the right side on the second and 10, and it's picked off David Wyatt, and that one will seal this game up. That's a great defensive play and a great defensive performance on the top 25 Minnesota school who came into this game really good on offense, but we shut them down, and really, we didn't even have to throw the ball well. 31 to 10, the player of the game actually ended up being Jonte Batson, who ran that kick return back for a touchdown. But we come away with the victory in this one, despite only throwing for 21 yards. Are you kidding me? I mean, these are the type of type of games we're dealing with here. Marquise Moore is definitely not a quarterback we can develop. He just seems like he's way too far behind, especially as a junior. He's gonna go right back to receiver when Deshaun Wilson does return from injury. And what do you know, he will be healthy next game. He'll go into the next game probable. But man, I don't know because next game we play Cincinnati, we'll see them next. But looking at this game here, a, a Frankie Kai, a really old villain, and Anderson Reed, they all had good games up front with Frankie Kai tallying two sacks. And don't forget about Colson Kavoris, the senior. In his first year starting, he's actually playing really, really well on the defensive end. And then looking at, you know, our secondary, I mean, just shut down. I mean, this is the type of games we've been putting up here this season. Two interceptions, both by linebackers this game, and we get the victory. So Deshaun Wilson with a broken tailbone got hurt about eight weeks ago. He is probable for this game, 
but we're going up against a 1-9 Cincinnati team. Now, it just doesn't make sense to risk further injury, bringing him back earlier. So we're going to sit him out this game as we're going up against a Cincinnati team who no longer has Robbie Richardson at running back. They have uh, McLaughlin as their running back, who is their best player on the squad, but he is not Robbie Richardson, not at all. They don't have the offensive line as well. So this is going to be a different-looking Cincinnati team. So let's fast forward into the fourth quarter because the first three quarters were rough playing offense, but we do have the five-point lead going into the fourth. Here's a throw to left side, and that's caught by Brock McKinney. They do still have the same quarterback, and that is going to be a big part of the Cincinnati team, Clint Bowling, but it is not equated to wins. So here's a throw out to the left side, and it's picked off. Adam Williams has got it. Another interception for this secondary, the second of the game, actually. Adam Williams comes up with this one. Man, this team on defense is special. This could be easily. You know, we had a really good offense, really good defense last year, but this one looks like it's even better. So now after that incomplete pass, you see Marquise Moore cannot make easy throws. Third and 10, rolling out to the right side, and he's going to be stuffed at about the two. And now here we go. Fourth and one. We're going to hand it off this time. Marquise Moore fights in for the touchdown. He walked in that time. Two yards out. And now we have the two-score lead as Cincinnati comes back out onto the field. So McLaughlin starts the next drive out with the handoff to the right side, and that's going to be a loss of four yards. Justin Royal on the stop that time. Man, he is having himself a great year. Second and 14 now. Clint Bowling throws out to the left side. He's got McKinney, who fights off Royal, but does get taken down by him. Gain of seven. So third and six this time. Bowling throws left side, and he's got his man for a first down. Robert Berry, seven yards. And it's another first down as this drive continues as Clint Boland drops back in the shotgun once again. Throw to the right side. It's caught by Moore. David Wyatt on the tackle. And they continue to move this ball as they move the ball across the 50-yard line with three and a half minutes left here in this game. Bowling airs it out to the right side. And it's caught by Bryce Moore. Touchdown, 40 yards. You don't see that often. Coco Bamaye got beat on that one and had bad positioning. And now it's back down to a six-point lead. So here's Jonte Batson, who ran one back earlier in the last game. Here he is, breaking a tackle and getting pushed out of bounds. Gain of 47. And now we move this to about the 45-yard line. Our formula, run the ball and hold this lead. It's a one-win team, and we're only up six in the fourth quarter. Here's a handoff. That's a gain of five on that one as they brings it to a second and six. Apollo St. Vincent breaks a tackle but can't get to the first down marker. And that's a gain of three. And now, third and three. We're going to run Jasper Sweet in motion. Fake it to him. Hand it off to Apollo St. Vincent, who gets tackled behind the line. Loss of one. Cincinnati calls their first time out. And here they go. Down by six. Under two minutes left. They could possibly take the lead. Here's Clint Bowling from the shotgun. Throw across the middle. He's got McKinney and a lot more. And it's a first down. Gain of 14 yards. And here they go, hurrying up to the line here. A minute and a half left exactly. Bowling throws the ball deep. And he's got Ridgeway for the touchdown. Coco gets beat twice in one game. That's definitely something you're not accustomed to seeing. This guy is a first-round talent. And now Cincinnati takes the lead. Can you believe it? We're on upset alert in this game versus a one-win team. But here we are back in an offense. We're going to run the ball, and there is a huge gain. 19 yards. Julian Gonzalez bails us out on that one. So 50 seconds left here. Here's Marquise Moore taking it to the left side on a quarterback power, and that's a gain of five. We do not want to risk any type of turnover. Here's a jet sweep to the right side. Jasper Sweet breaks up field, and he gets about a gain of seven, and we're, I think we're into Alex Kagan, the true freshman's field goal range so we're going to hand it off to Apollo get a little bit closer and let this clock wind down we call a timeout and we get it within two seconds left in the game Alex Kagan checks in the kick is up and it's good and we hold on for the victory can you believe it we were that close to losing to a one win team as the number one team in the nation just incredible this season has been a roller coaster as Marquise Moore wins another game barely throwing the ball 
but wow this is crazy five of 19 for 96 yards i mean this is just terrible quarterback play and there's nothing we can do about it because jabari hollywood is just as bad at quarterback but the good news is for the last game deshaun wilson will return he will be fully healthy and back and i am looking forward to playing with him but man, I, I, our team has been missing some offensive firepower, especially from the quarterback position, obviously. And it's been tough, I gotta admit it. And that's the reason why I didn't show the first three quarters of this game. It just wasn't worth it. I mean, he was missing so many throws and hopefully we do not have this problem anymore. We gotta keep Deshaun Wilson healthy and upright and that is gonna be the key. But we did get two more interceptions from two more linebackers. Tamari Jameson gets another one and then also Adam Williams gets one in this one so we advance to the last game of the season as we take on niu at home for the final home game and look at kirk earth street he's going with niu in this game that is very very surprising as let's just check out recruiting so i highlighted a couple of videos ago our first six commu commits were uh, noah herndon including grady boozer and then our quarterback of the future as well but then we had a few more signings, Clinton Jacobs, J.D. Townsend, and Will Copes, all young guys who will definitely be the future of this roster. Now, we do have some bad news, though. We were looking for a power back. We're not going to get it in Jameer Moss. He commits to Missouri as the number five halfback in the nation, and that is very unfortunate. So that means our recruiting efforts are going to need to shift a little bit to Shad Sparks, the other power back on our board. He is the future at running back. And then Jalen Waters is still at the top of our board. We've been number one with him the entire season, but he is not budging. Marquette is still right on our heels. We do still have a couple of guys we do want here at the top of our board, though, that are really, really important for the future. Respect is one of them because we don't really have, you know, a tight end of the future. We have Ramel Williams right now, who's a sophomore, but we get have to start thinking long term. So respect is definitely one of those guys that we will want. Now, Nicholas Marshall is a quarterback, it looks like. So we will have a, a little quarterback competition come next year. The position will definitely be uh, deeper. And then I want to take a look at Ilawi Husky. Now, this guy is amazing. He is the number one defensive tackle in the nation out of Charlotte, North Carolina. It would be amazing to have him. He's got 90 strength. He would definitely be one of the bigger guys on our defensive line along with Frankie Kai. Now, looking at another athlete here, Aaron Robinson. We're going to be looking to get him as well. I don't know what position he's exactly exactly going to play, but he is another big guy, 6'5", and an athlete. I'm really looking forward to that. And then another tackle we have on our board, maybe we can steal him away from NIU with the win next week. And then another cornerback, Kevin Paris. So we hop into this last episode of season eight, at least in regular season play. Wisconsin State is on top of the West. We have clinched a spot in the Big Ten Championship at least, but we will look to win and go undefeated in the regular season 12-0. On the other side, the Big Ten is really having a down year as Penn State is 8-3, and, and everybody else has at least three losses in the conference. So that's going to do it as the next episode will be Deshaun Wilson's return from injury. Hit subscribe. Hit that like button. Stay tuned. Let's get it. Let's go. I be trying to do me, but they be trying to copy, though. Only problem with that is they not me, though. People act cool, but really they be shy, though. They say they got your back, but they ain't even behind me, though. I be low-key, but police be trying to find